Hey guys, it's been a really long time since I made a YouTube video. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've been doing a lot of 3D scanning. And I've been working with a company called Shining 3D. Shining 3D is a company that's really known for 3D scanners, like the one I have here. This is called the EinScan Pro HD. They also make 3D printers, but today we're gonna to be talking about 3D scanners. So what is a 3D scanner? A 3D scanner is like what it sounds like. It's a scanner that scans objects. Uh, and over the last couple of months, I've been learning a lot about what you can scan and can't scan, and I'm gonna share it with you. So 3D scanning, why do you really need it? Well, if you're doing a lot of 3D printing or you need to bring something physical into a digital world, there are only a couple of ways. You can model it out, which takes a lot of time and a lot of measuring, and sometimes it's not accurate. Sometimes it's really hard when you have to build something like a human face, like you need to sculpt it. So with a 3D scanner, you can also scan a whole entire body, which is really cool. So over the last couple of months, I scanned a lot of different objects and I wanted to share with you what I've learned. How a 3D scanner works is that it uses structured light. It projects a pattern onto the object that you're scanning. This pattern might be a grid, it might be lines, it might be little dots. And what it does is there's a camera that registers how those grids and patterns are distorted and that'll know how, what the contours of your object is. The scanner has a hard time seeing this pattern in very bright sunlight because the sun or the bright light overexposes the camera so it's, it doesn't see the pattern, so it doesn't register. You have the disadvantage of not being able to scan something if it's in direct sunlight. You might have to wait till it's evening time or early in the morning or late in the evening or nighttime. The other thing with the scanner is that it has difficulty scanning things that are transparent, like these clear glasses or a glass piece, like a window, a glass of a car, um, a glass cup, because what happens is the light just shoots and the pattern just shoots right through the object. To solve that kind of thing, they, they make 3D scanning spray, which is like a chalk spray that you scan on an object and then it, over time that chalk residue will disappear. There are other things you could do like putting baby powder on an object. Objects that are too reflective, too shiny, too chrome is also similar to glass. Because the light is bouncing off and you get glare, um, the camera can't see that pattern. What you wanna do is try to dull down that surface with also scanning spray, or you can use powder or even if it's dirty and dusty, it kind of helps because it brings down the shine. Another big thing about 3D scanning is that a 3D scanner, as it moves through an object, it, it records features as well as contours and things. And it remembers it so that when it comes over that area again, it knows how to keep patching areas next to each other. So if you go through an area that is very flat, like a car body, for example, you're crossing over an area that is really flat and has no features. What happens is the camera doesn't know how to combine the current frame with the previous frame or the frame after that. So what happens is the tracking gets lost. Things don't align. So it's very important to have features when you're scanning and what they'd use is called tracking dots. Dots are really important because it creates a pattern on flat surfaces for the scanner to pick up and to recognize and to orient itself as it goes. So with those things in mind, you can set yourself up for success. So one other thing 3D scans have difficulty with is hair. So when you're scanning people, hair can be really tough because it's really fine. So you wanna, when you wanna scan hair well, there are two ways of doing it. Do a separate scan of just the hair at a higher setting so that it can pick up the tiny little details of a hair. The other thing is I have black hair. Scanning black objects is really hard because a pattern of light has difficulty seeing it. So the thing you wanna do is get one of, get this, high beams intense white hairspray. So what this does is like a costume hairspray that makes your hair white, ready? Say, so if you keep going, my hair will turn really white but allows it so that you can see uh, the hair, the scanner can see the hair a lot better <laughs> on camera. All right, let's go. Yeah, you see that? Getting old. So
So from all the things that I have scanned, those are the only major issues that I've come across and I found ways to work around it. And if you can figure out and problem solve how to fix these major issues, like the ones I mentioned, you should be able to scan pretty much anything. Uh, part of being a 3D scanner I've learned is being creative in figuring out how to capture or scan, how to scan it in sections and how to piece things together. Because with larger scans, it's really difficult to scan everything in one go, but software allows you to scan in pieces and stitch it together. For smaller objects, uh, I think I found that it's simpler to use a turntable uh, to more accurately get a really sharp scan. So some of the stuff that I've scanned, I'll show you right now, are a lot of sculptures that I've done uh, preserving art and helping a family preserve their late uncle's uh, sculptures upstate New York. Some of these pieces were really large. I mean, we're talking about eight feet wide um, and some were just small enough that could fit on a side table. 3D scanning, it's great for preserving not just art, but also old hardware like these porcelain knobs that used to be on a bathtub. These knobs are no longer manufactured, but the owners wanted to ask if it was possible to recreate them. And you could model it out, but it was definitely quicker for me to 3D scan them than to 3D print them. And I think they came out exactly like how they're supposed to. Uh, another thing that I've been working on that I'm really proud of is the Maker Scan project. This project is me going around and scanning makers from all over and sharing these files online. So they're kind of like portraitures of, but they're 3D scans of your favorite maker. So all of this is online at printables.com and you can actually go online and download your favorite maker. You can 3D print them. You can modify them, change them, put their heads on different funny things. Uh, really, it's just up there because I want people to be creative with it. And speaking of which, I recently scanned Jimmy DeResta from YouTube and also the Netflix show Making Fun. Um, I will be scanning the rest of the crew this October at Maker Camp. And, the, and what I'm doing for Maker Camp, and you can participate also, is I'm gonna print a full size one-to-one -one version of Jimmy DeResta. And that model is gonna be divided up into 57 pieces. And the pieces uh, I will have, uh, I, I will give out. You can email me, comment, uh, my email address is in the comment below. You can email me to get a piece. As long as my email is still there, there are still pieces available to do for this summer in 2022. So we're all gonna print a piece and I'm gonna put it together at Maker Camp and I'm gonna give it to Jimmy DeResta. And that's kind of like the, the fun, funnest part about 3D scanning for me is now scanning makers and uh, having them do these funny poses. I've scanned cosplayers and I've scanned, uh, and I've, I've met a lot of cool makers along the way and I'm really happy to have this project keep going. And I, as long as I have a 3D scanner, I'm gonna keep scanning people. If you're a maker and you wanna get scanned, uh, follow my Instagram because I will be announcing tour dates uh, to do maker meetups and where I will be, where you can come meet up with me and we could do scans uh, and upload it onto the maker project, maker scan project. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys made it this far, uh, if you have any questions about 3D scanning or shining 3D, put it in the comments below. I always reply back. Uh, and also let me know what you would 3D scan if you had a 3D scanner. Keep it clean. Bye.